Hi there, Andy from SSL here, and thank you for joining us today as we explore using our SSL UF8 control surface with Cubase. In this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know from connecting UF8 to your system, configuring the SSL 360 software which drives UF8, through to controlling Cubase itself. Towards the end of the video, we'll even cover customizing UF8 to suit your own workflow with the triggering of custom keyboard command sequences from a single button press. Now remember, you can actually connect up to four UF8s to create a huge 32 channel control surface. But in this video, we're keeping things simple with a single UF8. So without further ado, let's get to it. UF8 uses an external auto ranging power supply which is included in the box. Simply connect the power supply to the rear panel connector socket labeled DC. Next, connect UF8 to your computer using one of the included USB cables. If your computer has a USB A type port, then connect from that port on your computer to the socket labeled USB on UF8. Or if your computer has a USB C port, then connect from that to the port labeled USB on UF8. The port labeled through can be used to daisy chain USB communication through multiple UF8s should you have more than one. So for instance, you would connect the through port from your first UF8 to the USB port on the second. Finally, you'll see two jack sockets labeled FS1 and FS2. These are two standard foot switch connections which can be used to trigger various DAW commands like play and record from a standard momentary foot switch pedal. SSL 360 software is the brains behind your UF8 control surface and it must be installed on your Mac or PC in order to use UF8. So head to the downloads section on the SSL website, choose UF8 from the product list and download SSL 360. Once downloaded, simply follow the steps in the installer. With SSL 360 installed, it's time to open it up and you'll be greeted with the home page. This is where you'll notice your UF8s appear once they're connected. If you have multiple UF8s, you can simply drag and drop to rearrange as needed. And to help you do this, we've got a really nice identify feature, whereby if you click down on the image in the software, the displays of UF8 change to show the logo. Just helps you easily identify which unit you're moving. In this video, we'll be using just one UF8, so I'll go ahead and disconnect the second one. The home page is also where you'll see if any software or firmware updates are required for your system. So be sure to check it out and make sure you're up to date. One of your fate's special features is its ability to emulate a USB keyboard. This allows you to program and stack multiple keystrokes of your most commonly used DAW shortcuts directly onto your fate's keys, saving time, speeding up your workflow. We'll cover the specifics of how to set up keystrokes later in the video, but first we need to ensure the keyboard emulator inside UF8 is set up to operate for the correct geographical location that you're in, i.e. Europe, America or Japan. Now as soon as you've plugged in your UF8, you're likely to have seen this keyboard setup assistant window, and this is what the Mac presents when it doesn't recognise a keyboard that you've plugged in. Now don't worry if you closed this window the first time it appeared, you can always get back to it by going to System Preferences, Keyboard, and as long as your UF8 is plugged into your computer, change keyboard type. Now, before you proceed with the next step, you do need to ensure that SSL 360 is installed and running on your computer. If it is, then go and click Continue, and on your UF8 control surface, press and hold the 360 key for three seconds or until it turns orange. You'll now be able to select the region that you're in, and click done. Next, we want to configure 360 to work with the factory ship Cubase profile. So go to the UF8 tab and select Cubase from the drop down list on layer one. Now we also have layers two and three available if we were working with multiple DAWs, but today we're just working with Cubase, so we'll leave it set as is. Now below the layer selection, we have all of the user definable keys which can be changed to suit your own workflow. And we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. For now, let's jump into Cubase. 
Next, we need to configure UF8 as a MIDI controller in Cubase. So to do this, I'm going to go to the Studio menu and then click Studio Setup. And in here, I'm going to go to the plus symbol and then choose Mackie Control from the list. And I'm going to set the MIDI input to SSLV MIDI port 1. And I'm also going to do this for the output as well, SSLV MIDI port 1. And then click Apply. I prefer to leave Enable Auto Select off. This would automatically select a track by just touching a fader. Now, if you're working with multiple UF8s, then go and add another Mackie control and initially set this to the next port up, which is port 2, and click Apply. But one particular peculiarity with Cubase is it requires the ports to be reversed when working with multiple controllers. So SLV MIDI port 2, I'm going to put as the first Mackie control, and I'm going to set the second one to SLV MIDI port 1 and click Apply. And that would be ready. As we're only working with one UF8, I'm going to go ahead and remove the second Mackie control and put it back to SLV MIDI port 1. Now for the next step, what we need to do is go to MIDI port setup. And let me expand this window a little bit more. Now this final column in all MIDI inputs, what I want to do is for any SLV MIDI port inputs we're using for UF8, so in this case it's just SLV MIDI source one, I'm gonna deselect this. If I don't deselect this, then you may find the controller will trigger virtual instruments and such like. Click OK. And for the final step, we need to go to Studio, More Options, and Mackie Control, and make sure this is set to Cubase and not compatibility mode. So with our setup complete, UF8 has sprung into life and you can see the track metering and track names across the center of the displays. And down in the main controller section, we have the solo, cut and select keys. And last but not least, in the main controller section, we of course have the 100mm fully motorized high quality faders, which are really nice and responsive. And above the faders, we have a row of eight V-Pots, V-Pot standing for Virtual Pot, and what these are doing depends on the current V-Pot assignment mode. Display 1 tells us we're in Pan, and Display 3 says it's left-right Pan, so I can adjust that by turning the V-Pots here. And furthermore, in Pan mode, if I push a V-Pot, this will toggle the monitor function on and off. Now also, if I look at display eight, this gives me some information as to how many pages are available in the specific VPOT assignment mode. So in this case, I can see there's another page available and I can access this by using the page keys on UF8. And as you can see, I now have access to front rear parameters if they're available. Let's go back to left, right. And another important aspect of VPOT assignment modes in Cubase is the use of the shift key to access alternative modes. So here, if I hold shift and then press pan, I get access to a bunch of surround pan features that would be appropriate if I was working with surround panning tracks. For today, let's revert to standard left right pan by pressing the pan key. Before we explore the other VPOT assignment modes, let's take a look at a few of the essential operational aspects of using UF8 with Cubase. Let's start by looking at the selection mode keys on the right hand side. Now what these do is determine the function of the select keys on UF8. So there's norm and rec, and auto is disabled as it doesn't apply to Cubase. So in norm mode, I can use the select keys as regular track select functions, as you can see or I can press the rec key and the select keys become track record arms instead. You can see the button turns red there. Let's go back to working in normal mode. Now let's explore some of the essential workflow enhancement features, beginning with the quick keys. Quick key one toggles the console window open and closed. Quick key two toggles the channel editor window open and closed. And finally, Quick Key 3 is used to clear solos. So I've got a bunch of solos on here and press 3 and they're all cleared. Now, a neat little trick with UF8 is that I can also press and hold the Shift key and press the Quick Key 3 and it clears the mutes for me. The other thing worth knowing about is the name value function, and that's programmed to the fifth soft key at the top in the VPOT soft key mode. And what this does, depending on the VPOT assignment mode, is it will switch the label description above the VPOTs to be the value display instead, 
which can be very useful. Let's take a look at the large step channel encoder on the right hand side of UF8. By default, it will bank me through the tracks one at a time like this. Or alternatively, I can use the bank keys to move in multiples of eight, like so. And the channel encoder actually has two alternative modes of operation. Pressing the nav key will change the channel encoder to move me through scrolling along the timeline. And then also I can press the focus key to turn the channel encoder into a mouse scroll, which is great for controlling plugins. So let's open a plugin. It just happens to be SSL native drum strip. Hover the mouse cursor over it and then grab the channel encoder to get hands on. And don't forget, you can adjust your mouse scroll sensitivity in your system preferences to tweak the sensitivity. The bottom right hand corner of UF8 hosts the cursor keys and a zoom key in the center. If I light the zoom key by pressing it, then I've got horizontal and vertical track zooming in the arrangement page. And if I disable the zoom key, then the cursor keys mirror what the cursor keys do on my keyboard. The automation keys at the bottom left of UF8 can be used to put the selected track into one of Cubase's automation modes. So simply select the track you're interested in and then use the read and write keys to put the track into the corresponding mode. So far we've taken a look at how to control pans using the VPOTs in Cubase, but there are many more parameters that can be controlled using the VPOTs and indeed the faders on UF8. The main VPOT parameter modes are accessed via the pan, effect send, EQ, strip, VST instruments, routing, effects insert, master insert and plugin keys. And as you can see, all of these modes intercancel with one another. Let's take a deeper look at effect send mode. So as you can see, on the bottom of the displays, we have a readout for the send level. And on display three, I see the name of the currently selected track. So in this mode, I have access to all the effects ends on the currently selected track. Here I've got effects end one, here I've got effects end two, and so on and so forth. And the really nice thing about working with sends is that I can use the flip key to flip the levels down onto the faders like so. Let's come out of flip. And looking at the eighth display on UF8, I can see there are multiple pages available for this send VPOT assignment mode. And I can use the page keys, and now the VPOTs are accessing send bypasses on and off. And now they're accessing pre or post. And then on the next page, they're going to be controlling send destinations if I wish. Let's go back to them controlling levels. Effect send mode can also work in what's known as global mode. What this means is that instead of working with all the send slots on the selected track, I can work with a particular send slot across all tracks at once on UF8. To access this mode, I simply need to press and hold the shift key and then press the effect send key. The displays let me know what's going on. So as you can see in display one, it says effect send one and the third display says level. So now I'm using the VPOTs to control the level of effect send one across all tracks on UF8. And the nice thing is I can use the flip key and control the send levels on the faders instead of the VPOTs. And just like before, I have access to multiple pages of parameters. So I can use the page keys and instead of controlling level, I'm now controlling send bypasses on and off for the first send slot across all channels. And I can move across again and control pre post settings or panning or bus setup. Let's go back to level. Now, if I want to access send slots two, three, four, for example, I do this by simply pressing and holding the shift key and then pressing the effect send key to cycle through all of the available send slots. And if I want to return to working on all sends on the selected channel, I simply press the effect send key without shift. The EQ key allows you to take control of Cubase's inbuilt console EQ on the selected track. So to access this, press the EQ key. 
and you'll notice display one showing the words EQ Flip and then display three showing you the name of the currently selected track you're dealing with. And as you can see, across the VPOTs, we have the bands of the EQ split out in pairs with frequency and gain control. Frequency and gain control. And furthermore, the first control in each band, which is frequency, can be pushed and toggled into Q. Same over here for the second band, I can change it from frequency to Q by pushing the VPOT. And the second control in each band will allow you to bypass that band in or out. Now Cubase actually has an alternative mode of controlling EQ. If I press and hold shift and then press EQ, you'll see the first display simply says EQ as opposed to EQ flip. And in this mode, I can use the page keys and I have Q and individual band bypass in pairs on that page. If I go back to the first page, it's more like the first mode with gain and frequency. But instead, pushing of any VPOT in this mode toggles the whole EQ section in or out. And just like everything else, I can use the flip key and flip the EQ parameters down onto the faders for more hands-on control. The strip key allows you to take control of Cubase's strip processors on the currently selected track. So I simply press the strip key and you'll see the words Chan and Strip appear on the first two screens. On the third screen, you'll see the name of the currently selected track. And the first VPOT allows me to choose the type of processor, in this case, gate. And the second VPOT allows me to turn it on or off. And the third VPOT allows me to specify the type. And I can use the page keys to access the parameters of that strip processor using the VPOTs like so. And of course, the really nice thing is that I can use the flip key and control these parameters down on the faders. The VST Instruments key allows you to take control of any of the virtual instrument parameters you have in your session. So if I press the VST Instruments key and select a track with a virtual instrument on, you'll see that on the second VPOT I can turn it on or off, and on the third VPOT I can scroll through the list to select the virtual instrument I want. And then all I need to do is use the page keys to access the parameters of the virtual instrument like so on the VPOTs. And if there are more parameters, then simply use the page keys to get access to them. And of course, the really nice thing is I can use the flip key and take control of the parameters on the faders. The routing key allows me to take control of many of Cubase's routing related functions directly from the VPOTs. Press the routing key, and on the first page, I have control of the output assignments for each track. And on the second page, I've got control of the monitor functions. And on the third page, I've got the input assignments, which I can change with the VPOTs like so. And on the next page, I've got access to input gain on the VPOTs, which I can adjust. And then on the next page, I've got access to polarity invert on or off, like so. If you're working with Nuendo, you can access the direct routing activate deactivate functions by pressing and holding the shift key and then pressing the routing key. The VPOTs now allow me to turn direct routing on or off for each track. And if I want to access the rest of the direct routing functions, I can simply press the page keys to move through them like so. And then all I need to do to get back to the normal routing mode is press the routing key. The effects insert key is great for accessing the first insert slot on any effects channels you have set up in Cubase. Great for accessing reverb or delay parameters quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and press the effects insert key. And on the first VPOT I can select the effects track I'm interested in. And on the second VPOT I can bypass the insert effect on or off. And on the third I can select the effect, which is stereo delay in this case. Now if I press the page keys, then I've got access to all of the parameters right here, nice and easily. And of course, the really nice thing is I can use the flip key and put these parameters onto the faders. If you're using Cubase Pro, you can access the QSENS by pressing and holding the shift key and then pressing the effects insert key like so. And you'll notice display one tells me I'm dealing with effects studio one, Q1. So I can go ahead and I've got control of Q1 
level across all the tracks at once. And I can use the page keys to access parameters such as bypass and pre or post settings and panning. Now, if I want to go ahead and take control of Q2, then I simply press and hold the shift key and then press the effects insert key to toggle into effects studio two, as you can see on display one. And there we go, we've got control of Q2. Press the flip key to get hands on control. The master insert key allows you to take control of the effects on your master output. So press the master insert key and use the first VPOT to select the insert slot and use the second VPOT to toggle the bypass on and off. And the third VPOT selects the plugin you're interested in, which in this case is SSL bus compressor. And then you can use the page keys and you've got access to the parameters of that plugin across the VPOTs. Use the flip key to flip the parameters onto the faders. You can access your quick controls for tracks or virtual instruments quickly and easily from UF8. Simply press and hold the shift key and press the master insert key. Now I can select the track I'm interested in and I've got instant access to the quick controls set up for that track. And if I want to control the quick controls for virtual instrument tracks, I can go up to Studio and then VST Instruments. Click the little icon down here. And now UFA is controlling the quick controls for that virtual instrument. The plugin key allows me to access the insert slots of the currently selected track. So simply press the plugin key, then choose the track with the select keys. The name of the track will be displayed on the third display. Then the first VPOT will allow you to select the insert slot you want. The second VPOT will control the bypass on and off of the plugin. And the third VPOT allows you to select the plugin from the list. So we've chosen SSL native channel strip. Press the page keys and you'll have access to all the plugin parameters across the VPOTs. Or better still, press the flip key to get hands on with the faders for those parameters. The group of eight keys labeled one to eight on UF8 are used to access Cubase's channel visibility presets and channel types. Currently, I have a couple of different setups ready and each have different tracks visible within each setup. And I can simply press the corresponding number key to access these on UF8. So for instance, if I press two, my configuration is just kick, clap and prologue virtual instrument. And I can return to viewing all the tracks by pressing one. Now alternatively, I can filter the tracks by track type. So if I press and hold the shift key and then press number key four, this shows me just my effects tracks or shift and then five shows me my virtual instruments. I can press shift and one to return to showing all track types. With each UFA control surface, you have the flexibility to assign up to 43 user keys with a mixture of your own keyboard command sequences or commands from the DAW commands list in 360. These user keys are accessed from the top row of eight keys and you move through the five different banks using the keys one, two, three, four, and five from the top right hand section. You also have quick keys one to three, which we've already explored. Let's take a quick look through the user banks. So in one, we have the transport keys and things like cycle on and off here. In two, we have keys to take us between markers with previous and next, and also punch, scrub, project, and mixer. In three, we have the shift modifier and some saving functions. In four, we have things like motors on and off for the faders. And then in five, we have the function keys or F keys. Now these are really interesting because Cubase allows you to customize them to a number of different commands. So go to the studio, studio setup menu, and in here you'll see these F keys waiting to be assigned. There's also shifted versions, which give you another eight. So all you do is click in the category against the F key, pick a category. I'm gonna choose add track and then add audio track, click apply and then OK. And now when I press F1 on UF8, it triggers the add new track function. 
Now, obviously, this is great because there's a huge list of commands in here which you can choose to customize your F keys with. And then don't forget, user A and user B can be used with the foot switches on your UF8 to action transport start stop and transport record functions, for example. Once you're done setting up your F keys, you can, of course, give them more appropriate labels using 360. One of the best things about UF8 is its ability to be customized to suit your own workflow. Now, one of the examples we can do here is assigning keyboard shortcut commands or keyboard command sequences to some of the user definable keys in user bank four. So in 360, we're gonna make sure that we've got user bank four selected from up here. And we're gonna choose some keys that are available and click on the little editor. Now, instead of choosing one of the regular DAW commands, we're gonna choose keyboard command. And in here, you can type any keyboard command that you use in your workflow. So for example, option W will put all tracks into the right automation state. Give that a label. And on the next one, we're gonna keyboard command option R which in Cubase puts all tracks into read automation. Close this down. And you can see that if we go back into Cubase and use these keys we've set up on UF8, that I can toggle those commands easily from the surface. Now, any changes you make in the 360 software setup are automatically saved in the background. So you don't need to remember to formally save every time you change a key assignment, for example. But if you're going to work out of a different studio, for example, you can choose to save and load profiles and do that by clicking the disclosure triangle next to the profile name. Now also, if you've made some changes to the keyboard mappings but want to return to the factory shipped DAW profile, just click on the revert button there. We hope you found this video tutorial useful in exploring some of what Cubase and UF8 can do together. If you'd like some more information on the Mackie Control implementation, then you can go to the help menu in Cubase at the top. Go to Cubase help. Choose Cubase. And then the version. And from the list of documents, scroll down to you hit remote control devices. And in this document, you'll want the section called Mackie MCU Pro. For general information on UF8, please be sure to check out the SSL UF8 user guide and the SSL website. Thank you and goodbye.